scripture this morning is from Mark 14, verses 22 to 25. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. So in the reading of God's holy word. So in our scripture for today, we find Jesus meeting with the disciples during the Last Supper. And in the meeting, Jesus gives them instructions as to what they are to do when they partake of, of what we call today communion. He instructs them that when they take communion, they are to remember him and remember his sacrifice for all people. Now also during this meal, he talks to them about, and this is continuing on in the scripture, about how his blood is going to be poured out for many. So from that day on, all people can be free of sin and live a life eternally with him. Now very often those of us that have grown up in the church allow things like communion to simply become part of the routine. However, I think it's important for us to really think about what we are doing when we take communion and also what we must do so that others can receive the blessing of Jesus Christ. So today, to discuss this, I'm going to talk to you about a song that's actually popular on the radio. Well, at least it's popular on Christian radio. And I know for a lot of people that they find worship through, uh, through music much more meaningful than worship through preaching. Now, I do not take this personally, and I hope that those that worship best through music also get something out of the sermons each week, but it's simply a difference in how some people like to communicate with God. Some of us like to communicate simply by words. Some of us communicate better through music. So in my own life, I do have a love of music as well. And recently I was thinking about what it is that I get out of music. Because I am one of those word people, right? I am one of those that gets more worship out of preaching and listening to sermons than I do usually out of music. But I can tell you that I like all types of music, except... I've never been able to find a real love of classical music. Now, I can listen to it, and I can appreciate the mastery of the instruments that people are playing, and the beauty of the arrangement that the composer put together, but if I were given a choice of what I could listen to, it would certainly not be my first choice to what I would listen to. And as I thought about it this week, I realized the reason that I like other types of music more than classical music is because the thing that strikes me most or speaks to my heart the most when it comes to music is actually the lyrics of songs. So again, the words. It's the poetry and how it accompanies the music that I enjoy the most. So as such, I tend to like songs, and this will probably not be a surprise to you, songs that tell stories. So I've long been a fan of people like Bob Dylan or Bruce Springsteen or Johnny Cash, people who tell stories with their music, because I enjoy hearing those stories and their songs. And so today I want to tell you a story using the lyrics of a song that's called Come to the Table. And this is a song that's performed by the group The Sidewalk Prophets. And no, I will not be singing it for you today. So you can thank the Lord for that. At least I'm not going to do it on purpose. If I start to burst out in song on accident, that's probably just because the tune is in my head. But I have found that the lyrics to this song really speak to my heart, and I think they will for you too. So the song begins like this. We all start on the outside, the outside looking in. This is where grace begins. 
And that is so true for all of us. We all start on the outside looking in, whether it be when we are born or when we find ourselves in situations that move us towards God's grace. We start on the outside looking in. But God's grace is there for us, simply waiting for us to take Jesus as our Savior and accept his grace. The song continues. Just when all hope seemed lost, love opened the door for us. He said, come to the table. Come join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. You see, before we accept the grace of God, we feel like all hope is lost to us. Everything has gone wrong, but the love that Jesus Christ has for us opens that door for us. It opens the door for us, and Jesus begs us and invites us to come to the table with him. Now this table is a table that is not filled with saints. It's not a table that's filled with the just or the righteous but it's a table that's filled with sinners who have been redeemed. And brothers and sisters, that is all of us that believe in Christ. We are all sinners redeemed by his grace. And what does he want for us? Just to sit down at the table with him and be set free. He wants us to be set free of the sins of this world. He wants us to be set free from all the things that keep us from his love. The second verse of the song goes like this. Come meet this motley crew of misfits, these liars and these thieves. There's no one unwelcome here. So that sin and shame that you brought with you, you can leave it at the door and let mercy draw you near. Now perhaps there is no better way to describe those of us who are in the world before we find the grace of Jesus Christ than a motley crew of misfits. And what a great reminder to us in this verse that there is no one that isn't welcome here at the table of God. The grace of Jesus Christ is free to all who will accept him. And when we come to that table, when we make that decision to come to Jesus, we're to leave that sin and that shame that has been part of our lives for so long behind us. It is no longer a part of us. Because it is no longer the thing that defines us. It's no longer the thing that controls our lives. That sin, once we've accepted the grace of God, that is the thing that defines us. His grace and his love. And the song continues. To the thief and to the doubter, to the hero and the coward, to the prisoner and the soldier, to the young and to the old, all who hunger, all who thirst, all the last and all the first, all the paupers and the princes, all who fail, you've been forgiven. All who dream and all who suffer, all who loved and lost another, all the chained and all the free, all who follow, all who lead, anyone who's been let down, all the lost you have been found, all who've been labeled right or wrong, to everyone who hears this song, Come to the table. And this is a great reminder for us that no matter where we find ourselves in our lives, no matter where we feel that we are on in this walk of life, no matter how badly we have sinned in the past, and no matter what has been a part of our lives to that point, Jesus still wants you to come to the table with him. He still wants to give you his grace. He still wants to save you. And he still wants us to be part of his family, not just for today, but for every day and for all of eternity. Now, I don't often rely on the words of someone else when I'm delivering a sermon, but I just don't think I could say it any better than they did in this song. Come to the table and join the sinners that have been redeemed. Now, perhaps you're thinking to yourself, Why, pastor, are you speaking about this sermon today? Surely this would have been a better sermon for a day when we're taking communion. And that, brothers and sisters, is a valid criticism. However, I chose to deliver this sermon today as opposed to the day when we take communion 
for two reasons. The first is that I want you to really take to heart that when we do take communion again, you are prepared to do so in a way that offers your utmost thanks and worship to Jesus. And the second reason I chose to give this sermon today as opposed to when we have communion is because of this. And that is my challenge for you in this week and the coming weeks between now and when we have communion again. I want you to think about someone in your life that you know needs to come to the table of Jesus Christ. I want you to really pray for them in the coming weeks. I want you to contact them and talk to them. And then I want you to invite them, want you to invite them to come to the table with you when we next have communion. And I want you to do this because the grace of God is not just for us that are here today. It's not just for those that have already accepted Jesus, but the grace of God is for everyone. Too often people have never even heard that God's grace is available for them. So as his servants, we must be doing everything we can to bring others to the table so that they may experience his grace as well. So I am challenging you all to try and bring one person with you the first Sunday in September when we have communion again so that they may take communion as well. And when you speak to them, talk to them about the grace of God and what it means to take communion and remind them that in the United Methodist Church, the table is open for all. So let us do all that we can in the coming weeks to bring others to the table with us, the table of Jesus Christ. Amen.